More than a million people have been warned to move south after several days in which the Israeli Defense Forces have been massing on the border ahead of an expected ground offensive into Gaza. This in response to last weekend's attacks by members of Hamas, a group designated as a terror organization by many Western governments, including the UK. More than 1,300 people died in those attacks and over 100 hostages were taken. Well, there have already been several days of airstrikes on Gaza, which officials say have left around 1,900 Palestinians dead, including 600 children. And now the evacuation order states residents in the territory should move to the area south of Wadi Gaza. Hamas, however, says the order should be ignored, claiming it's propaganda. The Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations said tonight it amounts to ethnic cleansing while the UN Secretary General has reminded both sides that even war has rules. Well, we'll be getting the very latest from across the region. We'll look at the situation inside Gaza and hear from Anna Foster on the israel lebanon border. But first, here's Jeremy Bowen. To win a war, a country has to break the will of its enemy to fight. History suggests airstrikes alone won't do that, even ones as heavy as Israel's in Gaza. So Israel will have to send troops into the rubble if, as it says, it wants to destroy Hamas. Telling civilians to get out is part of preparing the battlefield. Leaflets, a non-lethal airdrop but full of menace, told more than a million people to move south. It happened to our grandfathers, said Mohammed Rocker. Now it's happening to us. It raises the ghosts of the past. Many Gazans trying to escape Israel's anger are descendants of almost one million Palestinians who fled or were forced out of their homes at gunpoint in Israel's independence war in 1948. Palestinians call it the catastrophe. Hamas sent their answer, more rockets, and told people to stay put. At the UN, the Secretary General told both sides to protect civilians. Even wars have rules. International humanitarian law and human rights law must re be respected and upheld. Civilians must be protected and also never use the shields. Refrigerated containers hold bodies awaiting identification. Some of more than 1,300 Israelis and foreigners killed by Hamas. But Israel says Hamas will feel its revenge, not civilians. Palestinians protested in the West Bank. 14 have been shot dead by the Israeli army by the evening. Almost all the violence between Israelis and Palestinians before last week's Hamas assault was in the West Bank. It is very tense and could get much worse. Jerusalem was quiet but not calm. Only older Palestinians were allowed to pray at Al-Aqsa Mosque by Israeli security forces. Younger men were banned as potential security risks. The mood in Jerusalem was grim, full of foreboding. The holy city is at the epicenter of the conflict. Palestinians said they feared that Israel's anger at the Hamas attack could be directed at them. It feels as if this crisis is going up a gear. Extreme pressure on civilians in Gaza. Tension here in Jerusalem. No one knows where this is going, but it's certain this is a dangerous moment, the worst Middle East crisis in a generation. Until last weekend, Israel believed the long conflict with the Palestinians could be contained. That illusion has gone. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Jerusalem. Well, tonight, the Palestinian United Nations envoy appealed to the UN to do more to stop a crime against humanity as Israel prepares for a possible ground assault into Gaza. Fuel, food and water supplies are running out in the territory, but Israel says it won't lift its blockade until Hamas frees all the hostages it seized last Saturday. 
John Donison, our former correspondent in Gaza, looks now at life there under siege and a warning his report does contain some distressing images. Israel has now been pounding Gaza, targeting Hamas, it says, for almost a week. Only when the dust settles does the devastation become clear. Our enemies are evil. They're cowards killing children, says Mohammed Abu Ola amid the wreckage of his home. They have no humanity, he goes on. Few jobs are more challenging here than that of a first responder. Under all this, somebody is alive. For now. For three days, he says, I didn't go home. But it never stops. For some, it's all too much. And these paramedics are working while under fire. He says he's just heard a colleague was killed while trying to save others. It's the fourth that day. But they can't stop working. And for Gaza's doctors, the stream of casualties is relentless. Inside the hospital in the town of Rafa, I want my daddy, she cries. More than 85% of injuries are among women and the children. And when I say children, I mean children. We are dealing with sophist so sophisticated kinds of a trauma and which we couldn't see ever before. And for many, the injuries are too severe. It's a massacre, says this father, leaving the hospital with his five-year-old daughter dead in his arms. John Donison, BBC News.